Animals of the Night. Probably to this day, still one of the weirdest videos on YouTube that I have ever seen. And that says a lot, considering all the weird shit I've seen over the years. Uh, this video came out many, many years ago, and uh, while it may not have gone super viral by today's standards, clocking in at about 300,000 views to today, it is still a video that really blew up in my hometown. I remember everyone at my school sending this video around. It was a cult hit. Everyone was singing along with it. And can you blame them? I mean, listen to this jam. From the world, we hid away parts of us Just to be in each other's arms We loved each other like it was That's my jam! We are not monsters, we are animals now, you may be wondering, Manx, why the hell are you showing me this video? Well, I promise you, there's a story to it, there's a purpose to it. So, for those of you who may be particularly perceptive, you may have noticed that at the start of this video, it actually says, music video for the book. Yes, the lovely lady singing in this video has actually written a book called The Werewolf, The Librarian, and I. And for the longest time, my friends and I tried our hardest to get a hold of a copy of this book. However, that was not easy, and uh, we looked everywhere online to try and get it. The author, who is the same lady as you see singing, uh, visited many conventions where she actually attempted to sell her books, and we know that because we followed her on Facebook. But uh, any attempts we had of trying to actually get one of these books and send them over, because of course, you know, we're in Norway and she's all, all the way over there in the States, proved to be rather difficult. So uh, my friends actually got in contact with her and attempted to uh, buy the book from her directly, but... Turns out she is not very fond of uh, electronic payments, such as PayPal, so she actually wanted us to send her money in an envelope <laughs> and she'd send us the book back. Obviously, um, this did not work out very well, uh, so we decided, okay, let's just wait until someone gets a hold of the book. For many years, this elusive book continued to avoid our grasp, and God knows I looked everywhere. Uh, I actually came across a guy at a message board claiming he had seen the book at his local library. I managed to get in touch with him, I actually made an account on the forum that he had posted on, and he responded back to me saying that he would go down to the library to see if he could find the book, but when he went down there the next day, he said that he could not find it anywhere, so he assumed that either someone had taken it, or maybe the library had thrown it away. So again, once again, uh, the book continued to elude me. But I knew now that it was out there. Surely, if it was in a library, that means that it must be out there somewhere, right? Well, last week, as I was on Amazon browsing uh, computer parts, I was looking for a new external hard drive. I saw it. I saw it. Out there. I don't know who put it out there. But it was out there. One week later, in my hands, I hold the book that has eluded me for five plus years. The best $2.50 I have ever spent online, plus $20 of shipping. And now, I'm going to read the first two chapters for you right here on my channel. This is The Werewolf, The Librarian and I by Aaron Rambo. Let's begin. All right, so before we start reading this book, uh, I just have to point out a few things about it. So this book is difficult to read for many reasons. Uh, first of all, it's written from the point of view of the main character, but sometimes it tends to jump into point of view of other characters. And also it has a lot of spelling mistakes and it is really messily written. Sometimes it's di kind of difficult to follow, but I will try my best. Also, some of the names in this book I don't even know how to begin pronouncing them. I think the main character's name is the worst one. So, with that out of the way, let us jump into chapter one of The Werewolf, The Librarian, and I. <clears throat> 
My name is Aurora. Aurora. Your name Aurora? Or I think it's Aurora. I'm in Norwegian, I'd say Aurora. My name is Aurora Lee. I am a librarian by day, but a werewolf by night. I work at the Rivers Wood Library. The people I work with are, to say the least, special. My manager's name is Jillian Wright. She is a fairy. I mean a real fairy. She has the wand and the dust. Fairies are not as nice as people think. Well, she isn't anyway. Dude, half the time she is PMSing, and the other half she is just, just plain mean. She never lets anyone take any vacations and will interrogate you to death if you call in sick. Everyone except for me. I think she is afraid I will turn into a werewolf and eat her, and FYI, if she pisses me off enough, I will! Question mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. I don't know why she put the question mark in there. The young lady under her is Casmine Smith. Her title is Lead Branch Assistant. She is in charge when the manager is not in the building, and she creates the schedule. Casimine is a tree nymph. She is basically a tree, with a face and arms and legs that talks. Being a tree nymph has its downsides, like she is upper afraid of fire and root root. It has its upsides as well, such as it makes her really flexible. She is a great bella dancer. She is limber and can stretch her limbs out beautifully. Then there is Rosa Akiman. She is the children's specialist and a catix. This is, by the way, a cross between a mother, a cat, and her father, Phoenix. She is an orange and red striped cat with gold wings. She has she was able to die and rise again, but she wouldn't burn. She would just lose all her fur and be reburned with new fur. She is great with the kids and patient and quiet and gives them rides. The kids love her. Our teen specialist is Kalilalila Sweet. She is a humicorn, which is part human and part unicorn. She has a beautiful silver flowing hair. The teenage girls loves to brush it, and teenage guys likes to throw hoops and try to make it around her horn. There are over 17 people who work at this little library, and throughout this book I will talk about each and every one of them. But first, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am a werewolf. I live in a city called... Oh no, sorry. Tiny town called Colorado, called River. It is quiet and not much happens here. You are probably wondering how I became a werewolf. No, my mom is not a dog and my dad is not a human and they did not mate. No, it didn't happen that way. I am a nymphomaniac. In other words, I love sex. Well, I was having sex with my now ex-boyfriend when he got a little too excited and bit my neck. He didn't tear into my throat or and start eating my innards. It stops there. Werewolves actually have self-control. It is something they have mastered over hundreds of years they have been here. They can control it as long as they are in human form. But when they are in werewolf form, it is a lot harder to control. Anyway, so he bit me on the neck. He tasted my blood. He then bit his tongue to control the urge to bite me again. He then drew blood from his tongue. As he held himself above me, I asked him, what was wrong? As he opened his mouth to say, nothing is wrong, I am fine. Little droplets of his blood split out of his mouth and into my wound. It only took a week for my blood to fuse with his and for me to transform for the first time into a werewolf. It hurt like hell. Every bone in my body broke to expand. My two front teeth were expanded out into overgrown K9. Yeah, she actually writes it K9 with that letter 9 or with the number 9. Sized teeth. My nails became claws. Russer sharp and deadly. I ran. I ran from the howling, from the 
claws from the fur from the teeth. I ran until I realized I was running from myself. In a matter of minutes, I had covered over 100 miles. I remember starting to run back, thinking, I have to get home. Then I woke up in my bed, covered in blood. For the first time ever, I was afraid I killed someone. I turned on the news. The newscaster was talking about a brutal murder. Oh God, what have I done? What have I done? I screamed. I listened, hoping... It was no one I knew. The massacre happened late last night. Five are supposedly dead. Only bits and pieces are left of them. The other three hid inside the house and were not harmed. Oh my god, I killed five people. I am a murderer. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. I fell to the floor and started rocking back and forth. Help me, I am a murderer, I kept saying. I looked up at the news caster. We will never know who killed these five today. But we can only hope they have a clucking a good time in the afterlife, she said with a laugh. I sat there, dumbfounded. What the hell, I said. The newscaster at the news station came on. The police believe that the killer of the five chickens to be a dog or coyote, so make sure you keep your animals safely inside at night. Thank you, and good night. I started crying in relief. I had never felt more relieved than I just did. I hadn't murdered anyone. I just had some chicken. For the next few days, I looked up online everything I could about werewolves, how they lived, where they came from, their transformation schedule so it didn't see inside with me. Like it would matter. I learned a lot. I learned like more two weeks later. Kevin, my current ex, is the man who made me into what I am today, came back. He always disappeared for two weeks. Now I know why. Hey baby, whatcha doing? He asked me and walked through my door. Nothing much, I said. Cool. Wanna go have some dinner? He asked. Sure, but I have a quick question to ask before we go, I said. Shoot, what do you want to know? And if you're asking me where I've been for the last two weeks, I told you. I just got to my parents to see them, he answered. Why didn't you tell me you were a werewolf? I guess I caught him off guard because his mouth fell open, and the only words that he got out were, Duh, duh, duh. <laughs> Can I just tell you where I have been for the last two weeks? He said, trying to play it off. No. I said sternly. How did you know I was a werewolf? I never showed any signs in front of you. None! He asked. Hmm? Let me think. Could it be that you bite me while having sex? No, no men, not all men can do that. Could it be that you are a very animal-like in the bedroom? No, that's just human instinct. Could it be that ever since you bit me, I turned into a werewolf? Oh, wait. Bingo! I think we have a winner, I said sarcastically. He was dumbfounded once again. Oh, God. Aurora! I never, I mean, this was never supposed to, he stammered out. I know, and from what I read, it is incurable, but I just need to know if there are places to go where I won't kill people, I asked. He starred at me for quite some time. Wow, I have changed a lot of people in my time, and you are the first to make it so well, he said. If he only knew that for the first week I sat in my house with the thought of killing myself. Why, you might ask, did I not kill myself? A friend once told me. The world would come to an end if this much sexiness was taken out. As I sat there <laughs> contemplating death, I thought of that quote and how interesting it would be to have the strength of a hundred men and the sight and hearing of a wolf. It took me some talking to get me to realize this wasn't a burden, it was a gift. I can make it and wield it into whatever I want. I am a werewolf slash librarian. Hello, Earth to Aurora. You there? He asked. Oh, sorry. What can I say? 
I move with the changes in my life. Now what can I do with it? I asked him. Whatever you want. The country is the best place to go when you change. A lot of animals and few people. And whenever you change back, it is usually in the middle of a forest or a field that no one can see all the blood on you. So buy a country home and go out there during a full moon, he said. Dude, I am a librarian, not a millionaire. I have problems paying next month's rent, and I have shit for credit. I can't afford that, I said. Then take a change of clothes out to the country. Park your car in the trees. When you change it, you will be in the country. When you change back, you walk to your car, use a wet nap to wipe yourself down, and change clothes. Well, what's left of your old ones? FYI, try to get naked when you change. It will save your clothing build, he said. We talked for a few hours about changing, sex, and getting too attached to people. It says changing and then sex, but she writes, she writes it like it says changing sex. This is not a good idea, because most humans can't deal with the idea of dating, mating with a werewolf. So now you know how it happened, interesting to say the least. Me and Kevin still talk, but he moved to Paris for a while. Oh, hang on. A patron is here to check out some books. Be right back. Sorry about that. Anyway, I work Tuesday nights, 12 noon, 9 p.m. I work with Kalililala, Peter Helzone, and Celia. As you know, Kalilalala is a human corn. Peter Pot is an annoying little shit of a pollstergeist. He is a clerk, but spends most of his time pushing books on top of little kids, tripping teenagers, and pulling the wigs of old folks. Yeah, we have to apologize a lot for the things he does. Then, when he tell people, leave, we have one big laugh. So you could say he is our comic relief. He is still an ass. Hellzone is the security officer for our library. He is a hellhound, and an interesting breed of a hellhound at that. His father was human, and his mother was a hellhound. Hellzone got 95% hellhound and 5% human. He looks ju just like a big black dog that walks on two hairy human legs. He spends most of his time barking orders to patrons and throwing them out of, when, out of the library when they disobey him. Celia is our page. The people who shelves the books. She is a cyclops. She has very bad depth perception, but is super fast and great at her job. She can shelve books with the best of them. I spend most of my Tuesday night cleaning up P after Peter or listening to people complain about Hellzone kicking them out for no reason, or making sure Celia doesn't run into the bookshelf, knock it over, and start a domino effect where it knocks all the bookshelves over every librarian's nightmare. Yeah, it's happened before. I do help patrons who are too afraid to ask anyone else for help because they are not human or they see my co-workers as freaks. I sometimes just sit there and think, if only they knew the truth. I used to be the only full human at the library until the incident. Now, I do believe I fit in rather well. Chapter 2 My work schedule is kinda a wonky, if you haven't already noticed. Thursdays I work 9 to 1, and then I work Fridays 9 to 6. It's a great job and I love it. Sometimes I feel like work is home, and home is work. I live with two roommates. Carrie, who is jobless, goes to school and sleeps on my couch. Carrie is an ex-vampire. She only drinks synthetic blood that has been made in Madrid. It works great for her blood cravings. It also coats the insides of her stomachs and it dissolves anything else she eats. Which is good because the, the synthetic blood has its side effects. The side effects are that it makes her very hungry for actual food such as chips, soda and pretzel. So now I have a 350 pounds 5 foot 3 ex vampire trying to sleep on my couch. And whoever said vampires don't get moody are such liars. My other roommate is named Seban. He is a royal pain in my ass. Seban is a Phyrixen. I suppose you are wondering what that is. Well, I will tell you. 
the phoenix may have many marvelous wonders burning into ashes and being reborn from them. They also have a wondrous reproductive system. The females do anyway. And a single female can have sex with f 15 different males. And the offspring will have traits from all 15 different males. This is how most new races are formed. Seban's mother was a phoenix, and his father was the only had two, thank god, was Iris, god of war and a human. So basically, Seban has a human body from his human father, gold, red, and yellow wings he got from his mother. He has a temper like no other from his father, the god of war, but he was still fun to be around. Listen to me, Babylon, I have to go to work. If Jillian isn't there, I'll write some more. Bye. Okay, now this is something or what. Jillian has meetings all today and tomorrow. Uber, yeah! But even cooler, I got an email from her saying, We have been asked to be a study group for the government. They, have, they want to know if chocolate will make the librarians happier. We were given a lot of chocolate and asked to eat it. First, five pieces a day, then ten, then fifteen, then twenty, all the way up to fifty pieces a day. Hell, I see it as free chocolate. I'm game. So, since today is Thursday, I only work four hours, so I ate at the beginning of every hour and one right before we left. I must admit, they are very good. You know, like those upper expensive chocolate that tastes great but you can never afford? We have to fill out survey forms on how our days went, how we felt. And if we were happier. Honestly, I felt nothing. So, during my chocolate-eating fun time, we did have a tiny incident. Working in a library, people think, Shh, you have to be quiet. Which is true, with some exceptions. This is one of them. I was sitting at the front desk when a norms came walking up. Norms is our slang word for a normal human. <laughs> we do have a... Patron that are uh, like us, mixed breeds, and some are norms. Well, this norms comes up to me and asked, Have you seen my son? My thought was, If he is ugly as you, he needs to stay lost. But I was polite and asked, No, ma'am, what does he look like? Well, he is wearing a light blue shirt, baby blue jeans. He is three years old. He has black hair. Her sentence was cut short as a boy who looked three years old with black hair and no clothes ran by. And he has a tendency for taking off his clothes, she finished before running after him. I started laughing as she ran after him, whispering, Mark, Mark, come back here, seriously. I thought I have supernatural hearing and I can hardly hear you. I know that kid can't. I think she just jumped from one sentence into another. I looked in between the shelves and saw Peter emerge from the shelf itself. I started to laugh even harder when the kid started to run faster, as if he was going to ram Peter, but ran right through him. He almost ran into the bookshelf, but made a last-minute turn while in Peter's ghostly body. Next, Kerninanthita Mace tries to stop him. Kerninita is a merlady. It's what you get if you mate a mermaid and a human. Kerninanida is completely human on land, but in water she is completely fish. She reached out to grab the nudist, but he quickly changed directions and started running down the mystery section aisle. He was almost to the end when started running down the mystery section aisle. He was almost to the end when Catherine Cake stepped out in front of our showboating baby nudists. Now, Catherine, our page for Thursdays, she is a pegator. Half Pegasus, half Minotaur. Unfortunately for Catherine, she got the shit end of the stick. Catherine, or Catherine, or Tear, as we call her, had the body of a Pegasus and the head and face of a Minotaur. When the little shit saw Tear, he turned the corner and dropped a deuce. Or in layman's terms, he pooped. Then he turned back and started running the way he just came from. He was more than happy to go back to his mother. Our streak here was put into clothes and his mother took him home after he cleaned up his little poopsie mess he made. 
There was no way in hell I was going to touch that. I don't get paid enough to clean up poop. Another crime solved. And another day the patrons of the Riverwood Library can feel safe. Hello! After I got off work, my lovely little roommate Carrie, sorry, my larger roommate, was sitting on the couch doing her school work. How was work, she asked. Another day in paradise, I said. I walked over and hung up my coat. Oh, hey, a letter was slipped under the door. It has your name on it, Carrie said. Really? Where is it? I asked. She handed me the letter. It was plain. It was in a plain white envelope on plain white lined paper. It read, Hello, you don't know me, but I have been watching you. You are strong, bold, and beautiful. Our paths must cross, for I must meet the one I wish to kiss. Your secret admirer. Um, okay, did you see who put it under the door, I asked. No, but I can tell you his blood type. It is O+, she said. Nice, but not helpful, I said. I decided to ignore the letter. After all, I am a werewolf, one of the strongest creatures out there. So I didn't have to fear anything or anyone. They feared me! How was I supposed to know that my secret admirer was about to knock down every defense I put up to protect myself and become part of my life? Alright, so that was uh, the two first chapters of uh, The Werewolf, The Librarian, and I by Aaron Rambo. Was it worth the wait? Did it live up to the hype? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, I, I think it's as they say, the chase is sometimes more uh, satisfying than the catch. But I must say, this book was every bit as weird as I thought it would be. I don't think you guys realize how difficult it is to read this book like it is so difficult to read it it is so chaotically written it's like a child wrote it um but at the same time i kind of want to know how it ends <laughs> so i think i'm gonna read the whole thing <laughs> maybe i'll make a final book review or something anyway ladies and gentlemen i hope you guys enjoyed this uh let's read first 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 of its kind on my channel thought it was kind of nice to do for halloween so uh, yeah hope you find some entertainment in it Give this video a like and a comment. Go buy the book. <laughs> Where both the librarian and I leave a book review. <laughs> Later. <laughs> we are, we are, where